10 British nationals. Irishman is expected to arrive home to Belfast tomorrow. And the American cyclist Lance Armstrong has for the first time publicly admitted using performance enhancing drugs. In an interview with Oprah Winfrey, he described himself as a bully and deeply flawed. He also apologised for his mistakes and said he was paying the price for his actions. Well, let's stay with that because we're joined here in the studio by journalist Paul Kimmage, himself a former professional cyclist who's been writing and campaigning against doping in the, in the sport of cycling for two decades now, Paul. Yes. This has been uh, um, uh, something that uh, has been uh, uh, of concern to you for a very long period. Yeah. Um, let's start, first of all, in relation to what Lance Armstrong has done. A lot of comment today on maybe what he hasn't done, but what he has done, it seems, is come absolutely clean in relation to this. All his seven Tour de France wins are contaminated now by, by drug taking. Yeah, there's nobody, not even Lance can test mm. that now, which is, is interesting. And I thought Oprah did really well in that opening segment where it was yes or no, mm. straight answer, and she addressed all of those issues right through to the fact where all of your seven tours doping assisted. And I thought she did really, really well there. I thought after that, the details then, we needed details, and that's where we got some sense that actually we were not getting the full story here. Yeah, um, but I mean, in, in terms of, of his deception, of what he describes as his own bullying of people, of the way that he tried to destroy people's lives who spoke out against what he was doing. Yeah. I mean, he was quite frank about all that. He admitted it. Mm. Uh, again, there are no details. I don't think people actually understand what that meant, what it was like to be bullied and terrorised. It was, he, was he did terrorise people uh, by Lance Armstrong. I don't think people actually understand that. I think if they'd watched CNN today, had Betsy Andrea, one of the people he mm. terrorised, they had an interview with her today and her reaction to it, and she was absolutely really, really upset over the fact that he wouldn't tell the truth mm. about her and what he'd done to her. And that's something he definitely needs to address. And that raises the question, well, how sincere was he last night? What was it all about, this, this love-in with opera? I don't get it. I don't understand it. Uh, I mean, somebody else who, who suffered uh, for speaking out is Emma O'Reilly, a, a Dublin-born uh, masseuse, wasn't she? Yes. And she, she uh, uh, I mean, he effectively implied that she had improper relations in his attempt to, with, you know, with other cyclists in his, in his attempt to destroy her That's character. That's been yeah. kind to, yeah, the well, way I'm, he described I'm using it. Yeah, yeah. Temperate <laughs> language temperate in this. Temperate language, yeah. indeed. Yeah, he was, uh, he treated her, Paul, listen, he treated a number of people abysmally. Um, in my view, he should be behind bars for that. You know, while I, you know, I would never single him out as the, and it would be ludicrous to do so as the only cheat the sport mm. has had because he's not. But what separates him is the way, the the viciousness of the way he uh, acted against people who mm. loved the sport and who stood up for truth. Now you say you wouldn't single him out um, as the only one who was at it, and the point that he made uh, in the interview is that pretty well everybody was at it. In fact. He didn't actually see what he was doing as cheating because it wasn't giving him, he thought, any advantage over anybody because everybody was at it. Well, that's not true. Um, mm. You know, I don't believe for one second everyone was at it. He justifies it in that mm. way. He justifies, well, you know, I, I took testosterone, but, you know, I had cancer, so, you know, was I, you know, um, rebalancing what cancer had cost mm. me? You know, he ju I, I used EPO, but not a lot. Again, after that initial exchange where he was absolutely frank and upfront and honest, uh, it got qualified after that and um, uh, and very foggy. In terms of the, the best service, in your view, that he can do the sport of cycling now, um, would it to be some, to do something that he didn't do last night, which was to explain the extent to which others were involved in this and implicated? This didn't happen. He can do one service to the sport. He cannot repair the damage he's done to the sport, but he can do it some service. It's small. No, it's actually a big service. And the big service he can do it is explain how he achieved those seven tour wins, who enabled him to achieve those seven tour wins because uh, he didn't do it in isolation. He mm. got help uh, from a number of areas, uh, his doctor, team officials, uh, and hired up mm. the, the cycling chain. So he needs to do that. And if he did that, I mean, remove those people because the important thing to remember is these people are still actively involved in the sport. Mm. So unless we remove them, this is going to happen again. He said that if there is any kind of truth and reconciliation process, he'll be the first person um, th through the door. So on, on the face of it, he is willing to cooperate. Well, I hope he is. I hope he, we can believe at least that from him. Hmm. That would be important, actually. If he, if, he, if he actually did that, he could do the sport some service. All right, well, there we leave it. Paul Kimmich, thanks indeed for talking to us. Thank, Thank you. Right. The French finance minister says he fully supports Ireland's efforts to reach a deal on banking debt. Pierre Moscovici was in Dublin for talks